Hi ladies and gentlemen, this is Dr. Julio Navoa. Hi everyone, it's Danielle. So we got a question and we wanted to answer it. There has been a misconception as to what happens if you damage a traditional silicone implant as compared to a gummy bear implant. And in reality, the even the highly cohesive or the new style gummy bear implants, which by the way, that's not a manufacturer name, that is a name that was coined by a plastic surgeon to describe the new highly cohesive implants. There is a misconception that the gummy bear implants uh, don't bleed out uh, if you cut them or you damage them. Now they're less likely to uh, show a defect or I've, in the years that I've been using gummy bear implants I've never, I've never had one that ruptured but we're going to show you today what happens if you do damage a traditional silicone implant as compared to a gummy bear implant. And so we're going to challenge, is the gummy bear implant a myth or magic? And so, so I, we already know ahead of the game what it is. <laughs> Can't help but eat the gummy bears, can you? Okay. Never mind. We'd have to do this video fast because you're going to eat all of my gummy bears. Okay. So let's talk about the, um, the uh, generally the safest ones to use are going to be the saline implant. Now a saline implant will come flat. It will come without the saline in it. And a benefit to the saline implant is that if it were to rupture, all it is is salt water that's absorbed by the body. How you place the saline in, uh, in a saline implant is through a, a special valve and you fill it up just like you would fill an air in a beach ball. You fill up the uh, saline inside of the, uh, inside of the implant and the valve will close off and keep the saline inside of the implant. The great thing about uh, saline implants is that because they come flat and you can um, roll them up just like a flauta, very small, even very large implants, you roll them up and you place them through a small incision and then they open up on the other side underneath the skin or underneath the muscle. And there, therefore, the incisions are very small as compared to silicone implants because the implants can be rolled and placed underneath uh, the skin or the muscle. So that's the benefit to saline. Are you eating another gummy bear? <laughs> another uh, to the saline implants. So let's talk about silicone implants. Now traditional silicone, as you can tell, these are uh, high profile style 45 of the Natril Allergon series. Now what you can see here is comparison from this one, this one, this one, and this one. They all are kind of rippled at the top and that's what silicone implants, traditional silicone implants have, are more likely to have ripples in them as compared to the high, highly cohesive or the gummy, gummy bear implant that has less likely to have ripples in it and that's one, one of the selling points of the, uh, of the gummy bear implant. So this one is also a little bit different. First of all, it's anatomical, so it looks more like a natural breast. Did you call it the teardrop? The teardrop, mm -hmm. more anatomical. Second of all, the coating is a textured coating, so it's less likely to form what's called a capsular contracture, but it also has uh, distinct uh, risk factors associated with your texture implants. So this is a uh, teardrop uh, textured implant of the silicone series as compared to the round um, high uh, gummy bear uh, style, which is smooth. And so these are the gummy bear implants. So let's go, we're gonna see what happens if you damage one, what happens compared to, uh, to the other ones. Now, traditionally about 360, it was the average implant size for most women in the United States. Uh, 400 is the size we generally place in our office. This is a 460, okay? So if you have a 32 uh, frame size or bra size woman, such as Danielle, a 32 will make, uh, with an implant of 360 size, will make her probably a large B or a small C. A 400 to 460 will make a patient a, a D or a double D. And Danielle has this implant size in, and an SRX gummy bear. And an SRX gummy bear. So if you look at the uh, size differences between this and this. And so what is your size, Daniel? Uh, they measure me at a 32G. So she is a 32G and a 32 frame bra size. Okay. So let's go ahead and decide which one are we going to uh, cut. This one is a 500 and this one is a 410. So this one's closer to these two. And this one is a 560. So I think we're going to decide on cutting the um, this one here as the style 45 traditional silicone, uh, the gummy bear uh, SRX here, and the textured anatomical SRX, uh, the gummy anatom bear. Uh, gummy bear. So here we go. First of all, you have to be really aware that if you try to um, uh, 
touch one of these, yeah, give the gummy bears. If you touch one of these after you uh, expose the shell, they be, they're very sticky, just like uh, 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 molasses. So here we go. We're going to go ahead and cut this. And you can already see what happens when you, when you cut the implant. You can squeeze a little bit, and this will tend to bleed out if you touch this. And I guess we're, we're going to go ahead and continue cutting. When it's exposed to tissue, it usually tends yes. to stick to the tissue. Sticks to the tissue. So this is a, a, a Style 45 standard cohesive implant. Check it out. Go ahead. So let's see what happens when we cut a gummy bear implant. To me, that looks to be about the same as with a traditional low cohesive implant. And if you squeeze this out, very, very similar to the low cohesive or lower cohesive. So again, look at this. The silicone sticks to the instrument. This one actually went back inside. And this one, yes. So this one draw, was drawn back into the implant shell. Well, this one's kind of... And it keeps more of its form as compared to this yeah, one. Yeah, that one's nice, that's all. So let's see what happens to a, to a textured implant. I'm going to try from this end. Now, this is much tougher. The shell is much harder. This is what we're looking at more in the style of the gummy bear. When you cut a gummy bear implant, look at that. Less likely to bleed, and it retracts right back. You see? That's what you're looking for. And nevertheless, you got some, some anger management issues. I'm there, just showing you. It's the same thing almost. So, so a textured implant in this style tends to retract back really nicely. However... If I touch it, you're going to still see that the silicone sticks to whatever I touch. This but one, it still stays. Within, yeah, look at that; it stays in the shell. It still form. stays within the implant. That's this the difference. Because that one, if it were to rupture, it just begins to start. And this one, this one stays within its shell, okay. and so does this one. All right. So some take-home messages. Number one, the and damage. They all feel. Natural. Uh, this one feels a little tougher. A little tougher, but they still feel... This one, they all feel natural. Yes. Okay. Because that's what the silicone's meant to be, more of a natural feeling. So, to take home messages. If you were to damage a gummy bear implant, except for in the textured style, they're going to retract back and keep their shell the best. However, all of them, if the silicone is exposed and touches tissue, all of them are sticky. All of them will lose some of the silicone, and this one more likely is the most that, that will lose. More gooey. That one will lose the most. So, but on, in the years that you've been, how, how many years have you been doing breast augmentation? Four, four years on the on the we're using the gummy bears, so we've never seen a rupture, never seen so a rupture of a gummy I've bear. I've never seen one. No one's ever but complained. But that is a safety mo uh, point, and we wanted to make sure to clarify that to everyone, especially if you're reading online that gummy bear implants when cut. Do not leak. They do leak, but they're less likely to leak to spread and less likely to spread the uh, the silicone. But it still is a safety factor. That's why we generally recommend the use of the salines if you're looking at that as a concern. So I hope we've answered the question. Is the gummy bear implant a myth or magic? It actually is a myth. It is just very or very similar to the traditional silicone. Any comments? No. Thank you for watching. Hope we answered your question. Take care.